I guess first question, how how would you, you say Skyler is a different quarterback today than when you saw him at the end of last season right now? Well, you know, I think probably the biggest thing is just comfort, comfort and uh, his, his understanding of kind of who we are and how we play and how we practice and um, not just the offense, but just how we go about our business. And I think that's one of the biggest things, uh, not just from an offensive standpoint, but from an entire team standpoint is just understanding of, of what it means to go and go to work each day uh, from a practice standpoint, if it's down in the weight room, if it's uh, in the meeting room, learning what we are and who we are offensively. I think he's just really, really grown in that aspect of understanding how we as a program want to go about our business. And he'll be, you know, he won't have Dalton this year to throw to. He'll be looking at some new guys. Who's kind of caught your eye so far at receiver in camp? Well, you know, I, I think the one guy uh, that, that really finished up strong last last year in our season was Taylor, and I think he's continued to grow. I think he's a, a young man that's worked hard on the, in the offseason and unfortunately an extended offseason to, to continue to grow and get stronger and, and just become a better wideout. You know, obviously the Maliks and the Josh Youngbloods and, and those guys are – are names that people know, but Sebastian Taylor's maybe a little bit of one that you wouldn't know as much. Uh, Landry Weber's done a nice job this uh, uh, so far. Um, Seth Porter's a guy that probably no one would even think of has really done a nice job. Um, you know, you still have the Philip Brookses that that he's really got the quick twitch. He looks in great shape now. Viking Gill has done a nice job. Um, so there, we, we feel good about that position. There's just no one as yet proven that they can be what Dalton was and and they're they're all really looking for an opportunity to get out there and show who they are Scott Fritchin hey Courtney how are you doing doing well good Josh Youngblood talking to him a couple times during the summer very driven uh very goal oriented that he would like to have a thousand yards receiving and this is coming from a guy who had nine receptions all of last season but how have you seen Josh maybe emerge and how can he be become more involved in the passing offense in 2020? I think the biggest thing for him uh, is just what you've said is he's, he's very driven. Um, you know, when he was in Tampa, uh, he had opportunity to get together with, with other receiver in that area. Um, so being NFL guys. And, and trying to learn and, and be a sponge on, on the craft of being a wide receiver. You know, a, a little bit different than maybe some people realize, you know, Josh didn't grow up, up as a quitter, senior being a wide receiver. You know, he's sort of a jack of all trades. And, and, and he's just to learn um, the game from the receiver point and, and continue to build on his craft and craft and, and quote, master his craft. Um, he is very focused, very driven, wants to be successful, and, and we've got to keep putting in, him in positions where he's successful. It seems like you're stacked and tied in all of a sudden with Riley Moore coming in and you have a first team all Big 12, Nick Lenners. How deep is that tight end position, and how can those two guys complement each other in the offense? Well, uh, you know, that's one of the things we we have a desire to get to, and that is to have multiple tight ends slash fullback that create issues for people. Um, guys that are big enough, strong enough, uh, understand the running well enough to, to set the point and be a legitimate blocker, but guys that can become matchup issues in the passing game. Um, I think Briley bring some of that. I think Nick did a nice job last year. I think, uh, you know, Mason uh, and Jack Stanine are two guys that can help us do some of the legit fullback work. And then, uh, uh, you know, Jax has got enough quick twitch and an athletic ability to possibly get out and, and catch a ball once in a while. And then Nick and Briley and really Sammy Wheeler, those three have to be passing game threats as well as the ability to Derek Young. Yeah, how has the uh, abbreviated offseason kind of impacted your ability to build the entire offensive line? It's really a, a concern all the time. Spring was going to be so important for us to really identify the guys that 
not only mentally can handle it and, and do it, but physically can get out there and be in the tr- get tired and still get their job done. Um, you know, one of the hardest things we'll or things we'll have to work on the most in this camp is, okay, it's play six, seven, play eight. Um, I'm starting to get tired. Well, the style of football we want to play, offense that we play, we want to have 12, 13, 14, 15 play drives. And, you know, we want defensive linemen to get tired. Um, the problem with that is when it's 14 or 15 play drives as an O-lineman, you're, you're not having somebody sub in for you. So you've got to still not only execute physically, but you've got to be able to communicate. And mentally, you've got to be strong. Um, and, and that's one of the things we'll have to really work at as camp continues is getting some 12 play drives and getting our, our left guard and our left tackle to be able to communicate with the center and all be on the page. We were, we were very spoiled last year because we had five seniors, basically, uh, and then put Josh, they all played a bunch of football together. So their ability to communicate and talk and work as a unit was really, really good where we need to get to that point with this offensive line group. And how, how would you, I guess, characterize the quarterback bat line, Skylar Thompson? Because I know you guys are pretty excited about Will Howard, the true freshman as well. Yeah, you know, and even in just the, the short amount of time we've been going, uh, I, I really feel good about three guys fighting for that backup spot. Will Howard obviously has come in and done pretty much exactly what we anticipated he would. Um, having be, having him be here in the spring hurt that we didn't have spring ball, but extremely was extremely good for him that he got to know the people. He got to know our players. Um, he got to know our coaches. He got to understand a little bit about our culture. Um, and that's helped him. Um, just now being a, a um, he has really, really started to, to, to show some of the things that we anticipated he would bring to the table um, when he got here. And then Nick has really done a good job of just continuing to learn, um, understands that Skyler is the quote guy, acted as though he's truly one play away from needing to be that guy that can that can be a, a player for us that can not just handle the offense, but can make plays. And that's three guys having a great competition to be that backup. Um, all of us understanding that Skyler is the, the guy that's going to right now. John Kurtz. John Kurtz. Yeah, hey, Courtney. I wanted to ask about Malik Knowles. Just looking at the roster, it would appear that he's bulked up from last year and obviously had his speed. How, how much do you think that, that will help him? Is that to what you guys do offensively this year? Well, I think the, 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 the ability for him with his length and his ability to really open run, the stronger he can be, the better it's going to be for him as a being able to say, okay, press cover. Yeah, I, I now I can body you up a little bit. I can use my size to hold the edge when I'm running a vertical route play. Um, you know, if he can stay healthy, and I think that extra weight and, and the strength that he's that he's strength is going to help him stay. And you know, we, we feel like the sky's the limit. Um, but but until you get out there and actually perform it and do it and stay healthy. Um, you know, it's, it's still a work that you'd say he's got a lot of potential to be a big time playmaker for us, and he really does. And we anticipate that he will make those plays, and, and we really think this extra strength and appreciate it. Thank you, Kellis. Yeah, Courtney, just how big of an addition is Bradley Moore to the offense? We saw what he did in Iowa. What what makes could make him a game changer here? Well, I'm a little bit using it off of things I saw him do, uh, uh, and honestly, it was at a, d- a different another school. But the thing that I think he's going to bring to the table isn't just his physical skills. He's really been a very good leader. He's without being able to get on the field and actually act unbelievably well. Um, day one's practice, he had zero busts. Now you'd say, okay, he didn't get a million reps. No, he still got a pretty good number of us and really, I feel like, understands um, the scheme, understands the why we're doing what we're doing with um, Is he going to be a huge in our league? I have, you know, that's got to, 
we got to let that – we obviously feel very good about him. Um, but, but like was stated before, Nick's a very, very good football player. Um, Sammy Wheeler sh showed signs of being able to be a threat in the passing game. So, Riley doesn't need to come in and be the man. We want him to come in and be a, a big back player, um, anticipate him being a matchup issue for people. But, but we also want to let it kind of come to him and, and let him, you know, there's no reason to put a whole bunch of extra expectations on him, just letting who we are, and, and we feel like he'll, he'll be just fine. All right, we're going to go with the last four that have their hands up here. So we'll start out with Mitchell. Hey, Coach, I was wondering how much the, the lost time in the offseason and summer ball and uh, spring ball, how much had that lost time hurt the, the, the development of the, this team? You know, it's hard to really quantify that. Um, I, I think from an offensive line standpoint, it, it, it definitely hurt to know – how well they're going to actually execute when it's because when it's you know, four brand new and, and obviously a guy that that wasn't a starter but really could have been in Josh Revis um, that that hurt um, the ability to see a Josh Youngblood uh, become more of a, a legit wide receiver threat that obviously hurt um, you know getting uh, Harry and, and those guys more touches and then also getting a Jacardier and, uh, and a Joe Irvin and, and, you know, some of those young guys, getting them opportunities to truly become better at their craft. Um, it, it hurt all of us. It's hard to really say how much because everybody got put in the same boat, meaning all the, all the programs in the country got put basically in the same boat. So, you know, when we get out there on, on the first Saturday that we get opportunity to play, uh, and that that our guys have taken it upon themselves to to make sure they're prepared mentally and physically, and that's part of our job, obviously, as coaches, is making sure that they understand who we are and style of all we want to play, and then show that that we're ready to play. And one other question: so knowing how close this has all come to being taken away and the sport being canceled, does it have does it give you guys a heightened level of of appreciation for the? game knowing can be to going away well I think the biggest thing with that is more our our whole staff and our players the understanding of worry about the things you can control and you can control preparing to be successful when you get opportunity to get on the field doesn't matter if they said it's time to play or if it's you know September 12th that they say it's time to play but worry about getting better each day and when they say let's Roll the ball out. Coach, obviously with Scott Thompson receivers, you know, you have good threats in the passing game, but in the running game, you have, have Siri, senior Harry Trotter and then the young talent of Jacardi Wright and Joe Irvin. Just how important is it going to be to establish a good running game? Well, our entire offense is based around the ability to run the football. It's not that we want to run the ball every snap, but, but forcing people to stop the run is always going to be a huge key for us. So if it's Jacardier, if it's Joe, if it's Tyler Burns, if it's Harry, you know, I'm okay with having a running, running back position by committee. But the bottom line is those guys, as well as the old line and tight ends, really got to make sure that they're on the same page. And, and a great running back helps the O line, and obviously the O line makes it really quote easier for a for a great tailback because then you get them to to space, you get them to the second level with space. But at the first level, at the line those O linemen, if he runs his track correctly, and that 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 we have to do a great job in camp is getting the tailbacks to be on the same page. Now, that's one thing that a lot of people don't think about much. Is you kind of think, okay, the old line's together. But the back is a huge part of how good our old line is. Yes, uh, speaking of offensive line, you got Josh Revis. I've During the course of the summer, I've also heard good things about Nick Johnson, Del Ford, uh, Christian Duffy. Um, just what are you expecting out of these guys and how quickly can they gel? 
Well, I think that will be a huge key is the how quickly they can gel. Uh, I, I said one time, I don't know, it might have been way back before even the COVID edition started that, you know, we feel program. I mean, we, we feel, feel like great drive blockers. There's a run game. Uh, we, we feel good about the old line that we have. We have a number of young men that 100 plus pounds that we feel like can move around well, but they still haven't been out there and really done it on the field. And that's a huge deal. That's why spring ball was so important for those old linemen. Well, that's come and gone. You can't worry about that. You got to move forward, getting them to understand the system as well as you can and getting them to play together as a group of five. Uh, we feel good about them. Uh, we feel like they're dedicated and, and their desire to learn are all tremendous. The problem, a ton of that learning has been on Zoom meetings. Uh, so the more times they can be together, the more times they can communicate together, the better we'll be. All right, last one here, Fitz. Hey, Coach. Good morning. Um, have you had to go through the situation? How thankful are you? you that you had a guy like Skylar Thompson uh, and just when it was just players working with themselves and thankful that you're in the second year and not your first year uh, with this program? Well, I, I, I it's uh, the first part of it is or has done a good job, but he's also had guys uh, using Harry Trotter as an example that wanted to be part of, of, of helping teach, wanted to be part of grab eight. Hey, how do we get this done better? In there numerous times with the wide receivers or the tight ends on their own teaching our offense. And as it's the second year, if this was his first year, learn the offense himself, he wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do that. You know, Noah Johnson, Josh Revis, their ability to get in there as a group of four or five or six, and those two be able to really talk our offense and talk the calls and, and say, yeah, that's what we'd call an oaky front, or that's what we'd say that's four down. Those things were huge for us because if it would have been a first year, we'd have never been able to get that done. Um, and they wouldn't have been able to get it because they wouldn't have known it well enough. Um, you, might, you might say, Noah Johnson, why would you use his as an example? Because even though he wasn't a starter, really smart young man that has a great disable and as a backup learned uh, the ins and outs. And all. So he was able to do a ton with our other old linemen from a teaching standpoint.